You're listening to the number one podcast for nonprofit leaders, getting your nonprofit fully funded. This is the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. All right, all right. Welcome back for another episode of the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Galasinski, and with me, Jim Dempsey. This week, we are going to be talking about big name speakers in an event, yep. whether you should have big name speakers, who they should be, how to get them, if you should get them, all that kind of stuff uh, is going to be addressed today. But before we get into it, if you wouldn't mind just smashing that subscribe button on YouTube and clicking the little bell notification because we have weekly podcast episodes coming out for nonprofit leaders and we don't want you to miss any. Yep. They're very exciting and oh, some yeah. of the topics are very, very relevant for what you are doing. So Absolutely. you can also listen to us on the go. You can check us out on the Apple Podcast app as well as Spotify. Yeah. Definitely check it out and subscribe. I would also encourage you to um, to comment if you have any questions because we read every single comment and every once in a while we might answer your question on a podcast episode. So yeah. you never know. Jason, I can't tell you how many people have told me they enjoy listening to our program on the way to work uh, via Spotify. So yeah. it's pretty neat. So Jim, um, yeah, let's get into this topic of oh, big boy. name speakers. Another controversial topic. Yeah, well, I think people tend to think, you know, if we can get a big name speaker at our dinner, without question, we're going to draw people in. Absolutely. So let's get the biggest and the best that we can find. That's right. You know, and and to some degree, I mean, there is a little bit of validity to it. Um, but I know in our course, the Perfect Vision Dinner, yeah, uh, we talk about this in great detail. Right. Uh, and. Uh, one of the points that I remember you making is that it gets us into kind of a vicious cycle. Oh, without question. And I can share some horror stories yeah. whenever you're ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with the horror stories. Seriously? No. I don't know. Okay, nah, Where nah. do you want to start? Let, we'll wait. Yeah, let's wait on uh, on the issues. I'll, I'll talk about the, okay. the horror stories. We got stories horror stories coming things. in the future. That actually coming could down. be number, point number four. You're, you're right. That oh, actually point number could four. Be, oh, well. That actually could be. Point number four, we got yeah, one. Yeah. Now we got three things yeah. for now yep. that uh, Jim is going to give us reasons why not to have a big speaker. Yeah, so absolutely. reason number one. Yeah. Well, Jason, I, I couldn't you know, agree more. I, I can't tell you how many teams I've gone into that said, well, you can't do a dinner without a big name speaker. Uh, what what benefit would that be to Who would want to even come? Especially with a new organization, if you don't have a big name speaker. And yeah. I have always said, I would rather have 250 people who love me and the organization rather than 500 people who could care less. And that really gets us down to our first point, yeah. which our first point is, is that a big name speaker will be a draw. So I think that's where you were going in the very beginning yeah. about the validity. Can you sure. get a lot of people at your event? If Franklin Graham showed up to your event as a speaker, yeah. I'm sure he could pack the house. He could pack the house out. Absolutely. But the problem with that, there's a couple problems. Yeah. Number one, if you follow our strategy and listen to the first podcast that we had, yeah. we are talking about providing a complimentary meal to people. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do that, that means that you're going to be providing a lot of meals for people who will plan on coming. And I don't want to be buying a lot of meals for people who are only coming to hear the big name speaker and are only interested in the speaker themselves and can care less right. about the organization. So what happens is a big name, when you use a big name speaker, you tend to get a lot of people who could care less about the organization and just care about the speaker. And so it's really important that you, especially with our complimentary meal. Uh, now, is that an argument for, well, maybe we should sell tables or sell tickets because you got a big name speaker? That's for a different discussion if all you're going to be doing is keeping is having a speaking engagement and have someone be a speaker and you're not providing meals, no expenses, things. That's a different issue entirely. But using our model and doing it correctly, a big name speaker actually will hurt you more than help you. Yeah, and Jim and I are going to refer to our model, and you might be new here and thinking, well, what what is this model that you keep talking about? Well, just real quick introduction. Uh, Jim has been working with Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now called Crew, right. for 38 years, yeah. coming on 39. Yep. And um, and I also have started my own software company called FundEasy. And uh, through that FundEasy uh, software, you know, I've had the opportunity of working with thousands of nonprofits. We've raised over a billion dollars with our fundraising software and 
Jim, yeah. you have raised over a billion dollars through your development system. Yeah. And we recently came together and put our heads together and said, how do we get this uh, good, solid development practice, this system that you use? Right. It's really taken about 40 years to develop. How do yeah. we get this into uh, the world right. where other nonprofits, some smaller organizations, well, I would say if you have a nonprofit, you can use this system. It doesn't matter if you, this is, system is not designed for yeah. uh, big organizations. It's not designed for small organizations. Yeah. It's designed for any organization. It's, a, it's really a flexible model that yeah. can be adjusted to any size organization. But if you're if you don't have a development plan or you don't have a development system, then chances are there's probably some things that you can uh, tweak right. to improve. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's yeah. really you know why we created this course. It's called the Perfect Vision Dinner. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and it's not perfect because we're perfect. It's right. perfect because we actually work with you over right. 20 weeks uh, live. Yeah, uh, We personalize the yeah. course. We and, make it perfect for you. And we try to make it perfect for you. So that's, that's what we do. Uh, but one of our points uh, early on in the course, I'd say like week one or week two, yeah. Yeah. we talk about this issue of big name speaker. Right. And um, because a lot of people think, well, I got to get a lot of people to my event and, you know. Best way to do it is with a big name speaker. Well, and big name speakers are also good communicators. Sure. You know, so, yeah. you know, they're very engaging. They speak for um, a living, yeah. But you had, you actually told a story that I remember yeah. in the course. And the story went something to the effect of uh, these two guys actually flew oh, in on a jet. Absolutely. Do you remember this one? Oh, I'll be happy to share that. And yeah. uh, you yeah. took note of them. Yeah. And yeah. you yeah. discovered something very interesting. Yep. Yeah. Well, actually, it, it you have to take it one step further uh, backward because okay. I, for a long time, I worked with a, an organization that was an arm of crew. I had always talked about what we're going to address here is finding the right speaker, not necessarily a big speaker. Mm -hmm. Well, people kind of just chipped at me long enough to say they really wanted to try and use one particular big name speaker. And I thought, oh man, let's, let's, let's go ahead and give it a try. Yeah. So if I mentioned the speaker's name, you would know it right off. He's a famous author and he put on his website that he was going to be speaking for this organization's dinner. And there were two gentlemen who for lack of a better term, we'll call them groupies of his, yeah. love hearing him speak. And they flew a private plane from Indianapolis, Indiana to Washington, D.C. Wow. to hear this name speaker. Yeah. What we saw is initially out of the blocks, yeah. we saw that it, it looked like this may actually appear to be a good idea mm -hmm. because in the past we'd had 250 people. By the time we were ready to have the dinner, we had over 500 people registered. Right. Well, I thought, okay, this is this is interesting. Um, well, you remember those two guys yeah. that, that I mentioned who were kind of the groupies watching on there yeah. that flew? Yeah. Well, I met them at the, at the pre-function reception, and they caught my attention. I thought, wow, this is impressive. We had two guys that flew across the United States, uh, mm -hmm. essentially Indianapolis to Washington, D.C. Right. And I thought, I'm going to you know, take note of these guys and find out how much they give at the end of the night. Well, at the end of the night, we ended up netting less money that year because we had additional expenses and so many people came just to hear the speaker and were not that interested in the organization. Mm. So we actually netted less money than we had in the past. Mm. And I see that happen often. Now, I've got a question for you. Those two individuals, how much do you think those two individuals gave, you know, flew their private plane? How, many, how much do you think collectively those two individuals gave that night? Well, I'm sure it was several thousand because, you know, several costs, costs several thousand several. to get across that. Yeah. In yeah a private I mean, plane to take a fuel, private plane fuel yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give it to you straight. They gave zero dollars that night. Oh, wow. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is that they 
just spent all their money on fuel to get to that dinner, but didn't. We lost money on those two. Well, and Jimmy, that happens often. Didn't have a very good appeal. It I must mean, have been it. That must have been the it. problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. I'm joking. No, I know. I know. I, yeah, yeah, well, that affirms our first point, Yeah, which is um, people will come to just hear the speaker. Right. That's exactly and uh, right. that's one of the drawbacks of having a big name speaker. Right. Right. And so um, we're going to get to the solution, obviously, in yep. this episode. Yep. So you got to stick with us to the end. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but we're going to go over four things. Yeah. Right. And the first one is people will come to hear the speaker. Right. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. No. If the purpose of your event is to introduce new people. Yeah. yeah. Introduce new people uh, to your organization. What we are actually trying to do at the Perfect Vision Dinner model is we are trying to pitch the vision, the mission, vision, and values yep. of the organization yep. to the right people. That's right. And the key of a successful dinner is mm -hmm. to have the right people. Exactly. And if you bring in a big name speaker, you're getting a lot of the wrong people. Yeah. You know, in that sense, people who really are not that interested. They're not interested wrong. in the yep. organization. Yep. They're interested in the, is the, the speaker. guy. Yep. Um, the second point that we wanted to make in getting a big name speaker is the fee involved. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's probably what you're getting at with your story. Oh, you probably yeah. had to pay a lot oh, more in fees. Sure. Without question. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, to be honest, this particular speaker really gave us a, a greatly discounted price, but we still paid yeah. significantly. I, in the past, we generally are given 500 to 1,000, something like that for an honorarium for a speaker. Well, add a few zeros to this. This one and it really I was gonna say what is the average big name speaker fee these yeah days? i would say these days it's going to be anywhere between 10 uh, about average is about ten thousand dollars for wow. for a, a fair you you will get some that'll be five thousand dollars um you'll get some that are 15 but i'd say probably average now you know you want a <laughs> tim tebow or you want uh you know a tony dungy something like that you're going to be paying you know 50, 000? 20 25 50 even a hundred thousand for wow. some right yeah yeah. So obviously, if you're trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars at your event or two hundred thousand, you know, ten fifteen thousand is a significant. It is chunk. It, yes. Yeah. Uh, especially when you can get a decent speaker for right. five hundred to a thousand. Right. So, um, exactly. We're going to get to that later on. Right. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about with the speaker fee or is that? Yeah, yeah just, you know, I, I, we really have to be good stewards of our resources. And frankly, one of the things we'll talk about here is is just the, the simple timing of things. Right. But uh, you when you are paying a, a, a big fee, it really is eating into your net, as you talked about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So first point, people will come to hear the speaker. Second point, there's large fees involved and it's right. not the best stewardship. Right. The third point we wanted to make is that big name speakers tend to have a, a speech right. already prepared yeah, ahead of time. Absolutely. And oftentimes these speeches are about 45 to 50 minutes. Or more. Yes, you're yeah. right. Yeah. And I know in our Perfect Vision Dinner model, we have everything timed out to a T. Right. Um, you actually have it all down to an hour and a half program. Right. It's really designed to lead people to a climax. That's right. And the climax is really the speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah but you is. have a specific time yes. for the speaker uh, to go. And yeah. I don't know if you want to say that. Well, yes. we've done a lot of research uh, and we put a lot into what is the perfect time for a speaker. Yeah. And we have found over the years that 20 minutes and actually to a larger degree, I'll even say 19 minutes because I want to emphasize how important that is. Cause sometimes you can say 20 yeah. and in people's minds are thinking 20, 25, 30, whatever it takes. Right. Right. I will oftentimes even say that, but the, you say in the course 19, we actually teach 19. Yeah, and, and, and that you, is people really, laugh at you when yeah, they say 19. A lot of times people will get up on stage and be like, well, they told me, uh, I can only I go 19, right? You know, exactly. and you're just like shaking your head. But, yeah, yeah, but absolutely. You, you, that brings a point across. Yeah, yes, it, it really does. And here's the thing. I want to leave the people wanting more. And what often happens with a 45, 50, 60 minute, hour and a half speaker is that people 
people get fatigue and mm-hmm. you can especially in a dinner that matters on how long it goes yeah. uh, one of the things we we'll, the principals will hear in the perfect dinner strategy is that we lose a thousand dollars a minute for every minute over well, you're two giving hours away and 15 all your minutes. secrets Jim stop it oh sorry about that I, <laughs> I don't mean to give secrets away to people but it's important <laughs> and and try if to you say have a, these for the course but uh, man uh, every once in a while I slip <laughs> no. yeah and and it, it you know, big name speaker will eat a, a chunk out of there. Yeah. And people often come out fatigued with those. I want Well, what's the first thing saying, you want to do after you've listened to a 45, 50 minute speaker after a 35 to 40 minute meal? Yeah. And you're coming up to, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Right. What's the first thing you're going to want to do as soon as the speaker is done? Well, you might think it would be the appeal, right? I would think. Well, I know the appeal comes after yeah. the big name speaker. So but you would think that. Yeah. But you know what happens? What, what we found over 20 minutes, and it starts to eat into what I call the bladder time. Yeah. And you will, if you exceed that bladder time, which yep. happens after 20 minutes, the next thing they'll be doing will either be <clears throat> headed into the bathroom yep. or headed out to the parking lot because they've got a babysitter well, I waiting. I think they head to the bathroom first and then there's and then a, head there's out a to decision the parking lot. while they're going to the bathroom yes. on whether I should go back in yeah. for another 20 minutes or whether I should head to my car to right. get... Ex- and that decision happens in that critical it time. It does. <laughs> it really does. And if you lose them then, there goes your dollars for yeah. the night. So it's so, so you, critical. You've actually had plenty of stories oh, you know, where... Yeah. I, I mean, we could go on and on and on. We could. But jokingly, you have admitted that one of the reasons why you've lost all your hair is because of the speakers that get on With stages. Out question. They say, they told me I can go 20 minutes, but. Right. Or they asked me to speak about this, but. but. Yes. <laughs> uh, and every time that word but comes yeah, out, I don't a know clump if of a, Jim's a, hair yeah, falls. I don't know if there's a good way of saying that, but they, uh, yes, my hair comes out in clumps, and that's why I have very little left. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Yep, yep. And I, I've actually seen you yeah. in the back room pacing back and forth. That is pretty standard. <laughs> Most dinners, there is a, a big uh, pathway where I have worn out the carpet and even yeah. gone into the concrete on that. Oh, yes, man. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, there's just something about the 20-minute mark that we've found. There is. Um, and it's really not necessary to go 45 minutes. I no. Mean, all the, no, the, if you right. do our perfect vision dinner model, uh, it's not all hanging on... The, the speaker. Right. It's right. it's a program. Yes. And so we're really taking people through a ministry update. We're taking people through testimonies yep. where people are hearing lots of different speakers and we have it all timed out. And it's yep. really like a perfectly orchestrated program yes. that's designed right. to ramp people up mm-hmm. and right. and ha- give them the experience of, wow, yeah. you know, this organization is something I want to give to. Right. And that's what right. it's designed to do. Yeah. And again, we work with you through live calls and stuff, right. but uh, it's really... That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And yeah. make it personal yeah. to your organization. Yeah. Well, um, a real life example is last spring, I had a speaker in New Jersey mm-hmm. who was supposed to go 20 minutes. He ended up going 40 minutes. Mm. And this dinner is fairly consistent in their income and their growth. Yeah. This individual went 20 minutes over. Do you want to take a guess at how much money they were down from the prior year? Well, I kind of know the answer, but I would say 20,000. 20,000 right on the nose. You have a, yeah. you have a Just theory. Just amazing, I do. You have a theory that for every minute the speaker goes over, yep, you lose $1,000. we $1, lose $1,000, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and I've often joked about saying, you know, would you like to go over? Sure, you want to go over 20 minutes? Absolutely. If you just write me that check for 20000 right now, uh, I'll be happy to let you go over. <laughs> I've never had anyone take me up on that offer. Yeah, uh, surprisingly. sounds like a good deal. It does sound like a good deal. <laughs> well, uh, so again, we're talking about the uh, four things. Um, so the first one, again, first one is... Big name speakers will draw the wrong people, right. and we are interested in getting the right people there. Mm-hmm. Second thing is that big name speakers have a big fee, right? and we want to be good stewards of that. And mm-hmm. there's plenty of great speakers and great options out there that don't warrant the big name speaker. Right. Um, the third negative is that 
people uh, don't realize this, but big name speakers often have a template yeah. and they set, just, they go program. around from yeah. temp to place to place yeah. and they just say the same thing. <laughs> Replace the name of the organization right. in here. Yeah, And you've actually experienced that oh, yeah. personally yeah. Yeah. with some of your big name yeah. speaker Absolutely. stories. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like, thank you for, um, or no, what was your example? Well, I, I, I say something like, it is so great to be here with replace the name of the organization yeah. in here. And you it know? feels kind of awkward, right? It, it does. Like, they're it like, really where, does. Where am I again? Yeah. Oh. I, I, you know, it's like, I think they said the exact same thing to the Kiwanis when they spoke to them the week, <laughs> the week before that. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's not very personal. Right. Um, you're not going to get a big name speaker um, making up a brand new speech right. just for your organization. That's right. It's not yeah. going to happen. Yep. Well, the fourth reason why not to have a big name speaker is there's a, actually a vicious cycle oh, that happens here. And yeah. Jim, you have, a, you have a really good story about this vicious cycle. Oh, so. Boy, I'll tell you. It, it here's the thing. The logic is, and and I, yeah. I really dislike it in a sense. Um, trying to think of the best word to to say it. But what happens is when you have a big name speaker and and you, people like the speaker, right? Well, you have to always top that with a bigger name speaker. The next so year. the next year you have a, you have a big name speaker. The next year you have to top that. Then you have to top that. Top that. One of the best examples that I have happened in. Uh, the late 1990s, the early 2000s. Yeah, this I was, is a great story. I was helping a team. How <laughs> you made the expectations so high? People are like, it's not <laughs> no, it's that a great. great. So, it's no. a great story. I don't know how you could get a higher name speaker. Yeah, I mean, yeah, some of these yeah. nonprofits probably salivate to yeah. have the speakers oh, you had. Yeah. No, the. Um, uh, that I was working with one of our teams in Houston, Texas, <laughs> yeah. and their board was just adamant about having a big name speaker. I mean, right. you can't live in Texas without making it big. Everything's big. Everything's big, including your speakers for your events. Yep. So they started out with the founder of Campus Crusade, Bill Bright, nice. then moved to uh, the a, a local pastor okay. who was enormous on the... All over the all over the world. Right. Then they moved to former Treasury Secretary under the Reagan administration. Wow. Jim Baker's wife, Susan Baker, was their speaker. Well, wow. she did such a good job. They asked her husband, former Treasury Secretary James Baker, hmm. to be the keynote speaker. And well, these are every year, right? Every this, year. So this is happening over like five, six years. Oh yeah, actually more like over ten years. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. And and they and. Every, they just kept topping that every year. Well, they'd gotten to the point where they had topped each other every year to the point where they got the former vice president of the United States, Dan Quayle, to come in and speak. Hmm. Well, when you have the vice president of the United States, the <laughs> only way to top the former vice president of the United States is Jason, the president of the United He's States. The president of the United yeah. States. Now, if you remember, the Bush family came out of yeah. Houston, Texas area. Right. So there were some connections, mm -hmm. and one of the board members was able to get a commitment from George W. Bush wow. to come in and be their keynote speaker. And sure enough, that and before you share the results sure. on that, I'm curious. Over this ten years, yes, how were the giving results? Were they increasing or were they decreasing over? Yeah. Yeah, actually, they were, which almost made that terrible because it it fostered and fueled this this every year kinds of thing. Mm -hmm. The problem is that, as you can imagine, is that every year the net kept kept getting smaller and smaller. So oh, if you okay. understand, right. the income increased, but the net got smaller and smaller because the speakers' fee were getting bigger and bigger. Right, and so we got to the point where. They have the President of the United States, George W. Bush, and I remember this like it was yesterday. It was two, 2002. Mm -hmm. So George Bush was elected in 2000. 2002 was an off-presidential election year. Mm -hmm. There was a member of Congress who was really struggling in a tough battle, and that individual needed a little backup. He needed the President of the United States to come in and help. Mm -hmm. A few days before the event, mm -hmm. the leadership of the dinner Got a call from the White House. Oh, no. Explained the story about the member who needed help yep. and said, I'm sorry to do this to you, but the president needs to cancel. The board... And by golly, you can't just tell the president of the United States that he signed a contract? And he's got to be there. <laughs> Actually, you don't make the president of the United States sign a contract, unfortunately. <laughs> right. uh, that, was a, that was a gentleman's agreement on that. Right, and right, right. The, uh, the board said, you know what? 
we just can't in good conscience have a replacement for the president of the United States. Hmm. They canceled, but what that did was it tarnished this team's reputation. Hmm. It, they lost what goodwill they built by canceling that at the last minute, even trying to explain that it right. was the president's decision. As a result, they never had another dinner again for over two decades wow. in that city because it wow. had so tarnished where they're well, at. But if you next year, if you said we're going to have the president, they're probably everyone's going to be like, sure, sure he will. is, sure yeah. he is, right? Exactly. We went through that last time, yeah. right? Right. So it's just it, it's a terrible situation. So that how I would are they never doing now? Anybody? Well, it's it honestly has really taken them time to recover, and they're starting to chip back up again. But it took Did them they learn a, their a lesson? long time. Well, totally different team now so uh, Did they learn they, their lesson? Uh, well <laughs> Jim that, that, come that's on. still up in the air so I, I would Seriously? Hope, I would hope they did but those we need to send them this podcast the, those leaders have <laughs> moved on and so uh, so uh, I, I would hope those leaders learn and right. I would hope that the future leaders learn yeah yeah well, it's important to you learn from you know learn from people's learn, mistakes yeah and learn from our mistakes right yeah well I think we understand you know now why a big name speaker is probably not the best for your vision dinner right or any kind of an event that you're doing uh, for those reasons that we said but let's get into some solutions yeah uh, what yeah. are the alternatives to a big name speaker yeah well here's the thing that I've learned Jason early on number one people want to hear a good communicator now, certainly a big name speaker is a good communicator, but that also comes with those negatives that we just mentioned. Right. I believe that you can find someone who is a good communicator who will stick to the time that you want. They'll understand your the mission and they'll understand what your organization does. And right. those things are so important. A lot of times when you put the name of the speaker on an invitation, you know, people may not know yeah. who the speaker is, um, but again, people aren't coming to hear the speaker, right? right? They're coming right. because uh, people invited them, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're they're coming to learn about the organization. That's your and desire. And so it doesn't matter who the speaker is. Right. So when it comes to a good speaker, I think the number one thing is that they are a very good communicator. And what yeah. we mean by that is someone who is passionate, yes. you know, someone who gets emotional, yep. you know, who uh, might even tear up, you yeah. know, not, not like an acting thing, but you know, yeah. someone who identifies with the cause, yeah, someone who can relate. brings emotion and passion. Yeah. Right. And you don't want to have an, an intellectual up there. You don't want to have a... Uh, Academic, somebody who understands your cause, but from a just purely numbers or facts right. standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, because we're, we're trying to motivate people right, to right, get excited. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so the speaker needs to be excited. Yeah. And it isn't even wrong to have someone who may sprinkle in a little humor in there, uh, appropriate humor. For I sure. can tell you one of the, the, uh, the, well, one of the most impressive speakers that I heard was a guy by the name of Jeff Foxworthy. Now, Jeff is a well-known comedian, hmm. but I can tell you, of course, he started with humor, right. but in an instant. Now, I've never seen anyone so professionally transition from people laughing to crying so quickly. <laughs> wow. And he moved them to the state where they understood that there was a problem and, and mm -hmm. there needed to be a solution. I, right. I just, I, I couldn't have been more impressed with right. that transition that Jeff did. Well, and really what we're trying to do with the Perfect Vision Dinner is we're trying to help people understand what the problem is, right. why the organization right. even exists for the first place. Absolutely. So the speaker needs to be able to, obviously we're going to be building up, Yeah. but he yeah. can't come in and just say something kind of completely off oh, the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, if we're building up a case yeah. for yeah. this organization and he comes up and yeah. completely just goes a different route, right. you know, right. he needs to be able to work with your team. He needs to be able to work with the event coordinator and right. understand what the plan is right. and what we're trying right. to do. And a big name speaker, a lot of times you don't even have access to them. No, you know, there's no, no way you could have called right. up the president of the United States yeah. and said, let me just prep you for this. Yeah. Night, you're you know? working through a handler and uh, so oftentimes your message doesn't get communicated. Right. And especially if you're working with a politician, 
they often come in with an axe to grind. They, they have a particular issue, a topic that they want to convey at that time, right. and that may or may not be on target. I'll give you an example of, of a speaker that came in with an organization. I worked with um, a time management Christian ministry, um, biblical good stewardship principles in mm-hmm. there. They had a speaker come in who was an Al-Qaeda operative who came Hmm. to Christ. His message was amazing. Hmm. At the end, people gave him a standing ovation. Hmm. They got less money than they had ever gotten before Hmm. because he was so off target. Hmm. He wasn't, what does an Al-Qaeda, you know, (laughs) officer, a conversion of an Al-Qaeda officer have to do with time management? Hmm. Someone heard him said, oh, this guy's a great speaker. Didn't even think to say, Hmm. is he related at all to the subject matter? They raised so little money with that because he was off target. I bet you people ran out to the his booth afterwards and bought his book. Well, ironically, <laughs> I've got a scary story about that. That's exactly what happened. He mm-hmm. had said to everyone, oh, by the way, I'll be signing my books out immediately afterwards. Mm-hmm. I had almost never, and well, at that time, I'd never seen people mo- bolt. more people bolt to the lobby to yeah. to get in line, to get his book and to get his signature. I the There were crickets in the room when it was time right. to... To and I bet you he was not, you know, handing out envelopes for the organization. He was not. He was not. He did yeah. extremely well in book sales at yeah. the end of the night, for sure. Yeah. So those are some of the drawbacks. Yes. And uh, again, you can learn from the 40 years of Jim <laughs> Dempsey. <laughs> and doing things right and doing a lot of things wrong. Yeah. So... Very, very helpful. Thank you, Jim, for sure. explaining all this to us. And uh, if you found this helpful, definitely let us know in the comments because we want to hear from you. And if yeah. you have a question about speakers, maybe there's something that we didn't ask or address, just go ahead and write that in the comments. And if you wouldn't mind giving us a like on this video, and if you know anyone who runs a nonprofit, yeah, uh, anyone at all, <laughs> and you feel like this could really help them, uh, please share this video with them. Yeah. Uh, we want to try to help as many nonprofits as possible. And a lot of times, you know, uh, people just don't know. Yeah. And, yeah, um, and yeah. so we really depend on people like you who are yeah. watching and listening to yeah. share with their friends. So, Well, that's our mission is to help nonprofit organizations take their ministry to the next level yeah. and have make an eternal impact. So we mentioned our model a lot on this episode. Yep. And uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can head over to fundraisingmasterminds.net. We have a yeah. link in the description. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of information about that course and the timing on when you can take that course. We usually limit the course to about 50 organizations uh, because we try to work with each one yeah. individually, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, and so yeah. it's not a massive you know, course. We try to intentionally keep it small. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if that's something that you're interested in, uh, definitely check it out. We, yeah. if depending on the timing of when this is available, uh, sometimes we have early bird specials um, and you can learn about that at the website. So yeah. definitely check it out. Absolutely. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to yeah. this YouTube channel, we also have many different episodes coming out in the future. We'd love for you to, to get them. Well, thanks again for tuning in to this episode and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.